Hello and welcome to another budget and leggy video. Now this is a quick video for one of my Patreon, Simon, who wants to know what this bad boy is like on Vauxhall slash Opals. Now I happen to have one in the garage, it's 2007 Opal Corsa 1.2. Um, that's the only one I have in, so we're gonna check it and see. Oh, I just pressed something, go back home. Again, trying to do it through camera. See if it auto detects. 2007, it's kind of on the limit. Oh, it's updating. Right, once it's finished updating, we'll continue. Okay, so it's finished updating. Let's see if it auto detects. Oh, it does. Okay. What information do we get? 2007 Opal. Yeah, that's nice. So that's correct. It's going to do its health check scan now. As far as I know, there's no codes with the car. Um, he wanted to also know, you know, if it gave you what information it gave. And as you can see, it gives us the VIN number, it gives us the year, it gives us a course of D, also gives us the engine type, which is really, really handy, especially if you're ordering parts. So it does give you some information there, Simon. We'll go through, obviously, other things with it as well. Let's let it go through its health report. And it's found to fault. Hasn't given us the mileage, but you know, that's it's given us everything else. It's given us our health report. Um, so let's just come out of this. We've got, let's go into. ABS, see what codes we've got. I'm not going to do any diagnostics on this because this could be an old coat. Read. Canvas communication fault to your error. That could be an old one because there's nothing wrong with the car. But let's just see what data we've got, for example, in here because that's what we wanted to know. As you can see, we've got a lot of stuff. I'm just going to go select all and go OK and see what readings we've got. I press the brake, yeah, brake light switch. You can see there, I'm pressing the brake, active and stuff. Um, wheel speed sensor, system voltage, which is handy. Uh, let me just go out of this, because what we can actually do, if I go to unselect, let me select the uh, wheel sensors and then graph them and see what they look like. Now this is typical because I've got the, the actual thing, I was just about to say, I've got it perfect, not moving. And of course, as soon as I said that, it moves. Let me just go into reverse, so there's nothing behind me, and see. There we go, it's reading. I'm only gonna be able to go forward and backwards because I'm holding everything. So let me just go combined and select them all, and we can actually graph them. Now, and there we go. Hold that forward. Oh, <laughs> this is so awkward. I've got to be careful I don't run over John now. There we go. You get the idea. I'm really struggling to do this on my own, but you get the idea. Um, so, yeah, we got a lot of good information in there. So, let's just go out and see what he also wanted to know is um, the information. What information do we get? And here we go, that's fantastic. That's also what I wanted to know, do we get the part number for the modules and stuff like that? And we do, as we can see, we got the system, it's a Bosch. We've got um, the codes, what else we got here, ACU address. Yeah, as you can see, you really do get a lot of data depending on what you want to do with that is obviously up to yourself, but you do get a lot of data for the module. That's another thing he was uh, asking about. So let's go into our SRS. And again, let's see what information we get about that. And again, we get the part number, the identification code, product data, system information, yeah, again, the address in the ECU, 
get an awful lot of information there handy for you know if you're replacing parts or having to get you know second hand modules and stuff like that wrong immobilizer again I say that's an old code because there is nothing wrong with this what do we have on the old data stream of this just have the resistance so let's just go to select all and again we can read the resist this is really really handy if you've got an air an airbag fault as you can see these are all more or less within the same kind of spec let's see we had one that was reading zero or i'm not sure on this particular system maybe 10 ohms is basically an open circuit that's what it is on most of them so if you're reading say 10 ohms on one you know and if it's the driver's side airbag or you know the curtain bag or whichever passenger seat but whichever one it happens to be you know you can go straight towards that that problem and see if you've got a broken wire or test the actual um, airbag to see if it is open circuit or anything like that so again this information here is just fantastic it's all on a nice nice screen so you got some good information there I think that's all we really had. So let me just go back out. Um, and what we'll do is we'll go into a few more checks and I'll get this set up a bit better. So what we can quickly do is go into it manually. Um, and just see what other modules we can say we can do an automatic and a manual let's just do an automatic and then we'll pick our module again all that good information there chassis number engine code and all that and that's another good thing what you can do with this you just press a screenshot button here and that's just took a screenshot of all that information so you've actually got it um, see we can do a health report system scan or manual select so we can essentially select each part we want and go into it depending on what car it is depending on what module because you know more cars have more modules and all that sort of stuff but again look here's all the information software version so if there's an update for it you can see what software you've got so let's say if it's not up to date or anything like that you know all that information is there and is fantastic and it's just there with a touch of a button so I hope this is helping you Simon I know it's not maybe on the exact car you need but you certainly get the idea so I'm just pressing back quit yes because especially for opals and voxels the OBD2 data a lot of the time really isn't good enough you need to go into like the manufacturer's scan like we've just did because sometimes there's just not a lot of information in the OBD2 stuff so let's just go to there was no um, there was no fault codes obviously let's just see what information we've got on here VIN again that's going to be obviously correct because we've more or less got that on there we've got the the IDs and stuff yeah so that's okay um, but let's go into onboard monitor I all oh, know I went into the wrong one well let's just see which one did I go into uh, controls I think was I no I didn't go into that one which one did I go into onboard monitoring oh, was it? Yeah. and you can see look we've got misfire data we've got EGR valve um, catalyst oh, this is you go into that we can monitor a few things here let's just go back out what I really want to look for is our free frames data we've got 39 um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick some of these temperature sensors and stuff, fuel trims, and we'll just see what they're like. Right, so I've just picked a few engine temperature, engine RPM, fuel system, so we're in closed loop, long and short term, and the fuel ratio. And as we can see, when I rev it, it reacts quite quickly. We've only got a few on there, 88 degrees. Um, Closed loop is our f um, fuel status and our long and short terms. We give a bit of a rev. Yeah, they're more or less bang on with each other. Let's just raise it up a little bit. 
yeah they're, they're switching they're fine so there we go um that's kind of the uh obd2 side of things let's go into some other features i've just very quickly put um long term and short term and engine rpm on a graph so you can actually see exactly what's going on because again graph it is very important especially if you're driving um and you want to see what's going on to our reset function obviously we haven't got a brake light or the the button handbrake this doesn't need a battery light reset uh it doesn't need injectors coding doesn't obviously have dpfs um there's nothing we can really do here with this particular car right so like i said the only thing we can really do is the oil reset let's see what we can actually do select the car Vauxhall, okay. Yeah, it's recognized it. Let's go manual, yep. Uh, Corsa uh, D. There we go. And then boom, look, it tells you how to do it. All the information is on here, how to reset the uh, engine light or the service light when it comes on. I don't know if it's going to be automatic on this one, software reset. We're not going to go into that, but as you can see there, manual reset. That's all we can really do with this particular one because we don't have, you know, push button handbrakes or, you know, um, DPF because obviously it's a petrol and stuff like that. So, you know, hopefully that kind of gets you a bit of information on it, Simon, to what this can actually do on Vauxhall slash Opals. This is just a very, very basic course, remember. You know, it hasn't got, you know, hundreds and hundreds of computers, it's just very basic. But you can even see the, the information that's in here is really good. And like I said, I really do like the fact that it has the uh, uh, battery light on the top there. So that's it, really. So look, hope it helps. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, and all that. Don't forget to check out my Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, and all that down below. Links up here. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sorted.